All right, we'll see how we finished up in the uh, Mexican Valley tournament. I didn't. I picked up one shot, and I got super lucky. I made it, but I shit out of eighteen holes. I probably only hit maybe four or five of them imperfect, and I just smoked the cup on every single one of those. I it was super close, super super close. But you need to pick something up, something, something, and I didn't do it. That's how it rolls. The main goal there was is to go out and have fun and shoot minimum score and see if I could pick something up. And I did all of that except for pick something up. Let's see what I got here. Three junglists. All right. I can take that home to the bank. Let's see what we have in store for us for our next big tournament. Oh, we do have a golden shot here. Where is the golden shot? I, I will tell you, if you don't watch Tommy's videos, it is definitely worth watching his videos when he does the golden shot stuff. You will, you will definitely be able to be close. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. I was doing a backspin shot, and there's no, uh, no way here. To... Let me think. It's going to be with a long iron. Long iron's uh, 1.7 per ring. Let me think. All right, I'll take my. I'll take my shot, my free shot. I'll take my free shot. All right. 6.4 divided by 1 1.7. 5.64 rings. And I'm continuing. I picked up right where I left off in the tournament. Just uh, just hitting the greats. Too far. Too far. I needed like two top spin and not three. <laughs> All right. There you have it. That's why you watch the Tommy deal. Because he will show you not only what spin to put on it. But what, what to move it. And where to start it off. And get the whole deal. And you won't be a loser like me. All right. Let's clean up all of the shit that's floating around up here. Let's change our ball. Just in case we have to go out, we don't want to get uh, get caught up with anything. I <clears throat> These holes, so we have the... Uh, the Driving Legends 9-hole cup coming up. And let's see where they're at. They're on Old Bridge, and I don't have a lot of time on these holes, so I'll have to see if I if I can't remember it, I'll I'll go play it. This hole right here. All right. First of all, let me give you some words. Let me give you the general safety announcement. You can go from here. We have, obviously we can go to the left or the right. We can go through this way and try and get on and one. We we'll end up right here in the rough. This would be a great hole for a power five precision ball. Because if you don't make it, you've got, I mean, you're in a perfect spot. You can lay it up out on this range out here, trying to get like up into this zone. And I think if you get out here, you're in short iron. It's a little bit of effort. Like you've got to, you have to set this shot up. And this is almost what I call a blind curl shot where you're facing off in this direction and you're trying to get over here. So you're trying to swing this angle and, you know, you're going to have to set this shot up and take this shot and figure out what ball, like how far forward you need to be in your run and how much curl you're going to put on or if you're going to set it up so that it's a max curl shot with your club and what club are you going to use to try and get out here. You're going to have to use the clubs that are in your bag to figure that out. And if we have a big headwind day, that I'm pretty sure this is how we're going to have to do it. But if we've got sidewind or tailwind, you can go for the green. However, that being said, there are some risks 
involved with this reward. If you're in the second cut of the rough or the third cut of the rough right here, you are OB, out of bounds. If you hit a tree and land out here, you are OB, you are out of bounds. There is a tree, like one of these trees right here, if you're trying to come through here, I, and it must be one of these ones right here, it has one leaf, like the branch comes out and then there's a little leaf on the end of that branch. And you can see it. You can see that it's there, but it's not even close to being in your way. That limb must be real flexible and it stretches because that leaf can be in your way. And you can end up screwing up right here. And you are OB, out of bounds. So there are some big risks going to the left. However, that being said, if you can go to the left and end up up here, either on the green or even in the rough right there, if you hit perfect, you're going in the hole. My observation on this is that intuitively we want to run like this on this side of the tree going at it. But I actually want to go in between the tree and this sand trap right here because it's in the shallow part. Like I don't have to go as far forward to get there. And it seems to run out a little bit better on the lower side than it does up here. Like you would think that like this is a hill rolling down that you might be able to get a little bit of a whip and get some help from the terrain um, it seems to me if i remember this hole correctly that you actually get a little bit more help down here as far as trying to roll out and if you're pointing right at the tree trying to get through this gap it separates you from that leaf and so the leaf is right here and, and that pulls you to the right and gets you the hell away from it so I'm going to, on it, this is going to be one of those holes where I, what we really need to do when we go out there and practice is practice this shot. Okay, set this shot up and get this shot in your bag so that on days when you, because we know what we're going to do here, we're going to, we're, it's all or nothing. But if for whatever reason the wind isn't right for us, we already have this shot in our bag. We don't have to come out here and reinvent the wheel in the middle of the damn tournament. That is the deal. So I will be practicing this, but this is the shot that I'm going to take um, if the wind is right. And you might find you really like that shot out there and you're too inconsistent, like you don't have any precision balls. This is another one of those holes. All right. It seems like we just played this hole in a tournament not too long ago. If Okay, so... The flagpole used to be like right on that track. There's a rough bump that you can do here. This is a hole that if you're playing, depending on where you're getting out there and what ball you're bringing out, you may want to bring out a big hitting wood because when you're in this spot, if you want to get to the point where you can do the rough bump, you want to make sure you've got the distance to get there. I think if you get up here far enough, you're, you know, and you've got the right ball, you can get in your sniper range, but you may be right there, right on your red line. So if you're just like a few yards short, you could end up hampering your second shot. So definitely have to practice this. If we draw the line, <clears throat> excuse me, if we draw the line through the trees to go through this, I mean, we don't want to be anywhere in this zone. Ideally, we want to be along the front in this quadrant right here so that we've got an access to that rough bump and we don't have to have a lot of side spin. If you're going to want to try and go forward, you want to, you you need to get up into this quadrant. So you need to get past those trees so that you've got a straight up shot and you don't have to contend with having to go around them. It's harder to get up here. You're going to have to bring you may have to bring out something special or do a bunch of overpower, but to get right here you can bring out I'm pretty sure you can bring out your QB. And it may be a situation depending on your clubs where you're bringing out a bigger ball, not because you need the bigger ball for the drive to get into this triangle, but you're bringing the bigger ball so you make sure your red line's where you want to be on the second shot. We have a really good opportunity here, and I can't remember what the adjustment is. What's Tommy got? No elevation set, so I have no idea what the elevation will be. Are we playing with brand new holes here? Let's look at this. Let's make sure. We may have new pin placement, so I may have to go play it. Let's look. Let's look. Looky, looky. Driving legends. Join us for a few laps of the luscious yet tricky greens of Quail Hollow and Old Bridge Park. 
with no par threes. We only want to see big swings and drives, so pack those hard-hitting clubs. Don't say anything about uh, the wind will be the same each round, so we'll be able to work the work our stuff out as we go along. But no new holes. All right, all right. Pin placement will be the same. I am going to be shooting for this and then doing the rough bump. It seems like there was an adjustment, like we were adding a little bit of wind on, but I'm I'm not going to swear to that. All right, hole number three. That'll explain why we have nothing but big holes here. This is a tricky hole because of all of the movement that's out here. So like you get into a spot where you think you could go forward, but that spot's on the side of a hill like this and your ball's going off in this direction. Or you're over here and your ball's going off on in this direction, even though it should be going straight because of the terrain that you're on. And it's really kind of hard to get it up in there. There is a shot to try and get it like up into this range. And... If my memory serves me correctly, this area down here where the green's at is one of those areas that if you do, you can do a rough bump out of the fairway here because it's so damn steep and it rolls off the sand trap and comes down to the green. It's so steep in this area that if you're, if you're playing down here in this range, you can put, I think it's a backspin shot, you can put backspin on it and woe it up and do a rough bump in the fairway here just because of how steep it is. Because the balls come flying in and then hits this steep area. And if it's got a bunch of backspin on it, it'll it'll just slide out like a rough bump. And that we have that's the kind of shot that we're going to be taking to get to the cup. So we're gonna we really want to work on our wind adjustment here because if you hit forward to that, you're gonna take a normal bounce like you normally would if you're hitting. And it and you may have to put top spin on it from here in order to run it, then you're really gonna fly. If you hit it back here, it's going to respond differently. So we will have to work on this. But I do remember that it is tricky to get up in here. And in order to get there consistently, it seemed to me that with Dunner and I, we were playing, we were playing bigger balls. I'm going to see what kind of, I'm going to, because I have so little time and grade on this, I really want to see, like we got our tee box here and we're hitting down through this fairway. The green's over here. Like what we can do, like where our red line's at in this area as far as like trying to use this area to run up to the green. Because I know you can get right here. So, you know, can I get to that side over here if I set a blind curl shot up with a top seven boost ball or what the deal is? There's some opportunities here, I think, to, to potentially get on. But it is going to be hard because of how it is out here. Because there's so much undulation out here in the fairway that it's hard to get your ball to go straight. If I remember correctly. If I remember correctly, uh, let's let's go. Or do we have these holes available to us? I think we do. I think. I think. I think. I think we do. Practice hole number three. Let, let's go look at hole. Was that hole number three? That was hole number three. How many practice stubbings I got? I got nine. Let's go look at hole number three. Let's go practice it. We'll go practice it and see what the deal is on it. It would really be nice if I could find an opponent that really wanted to practice. Like they see me out there practicing and tank the shot so they know they're one up. They don't have to get in any big hurry. Yeah, there's just uh, possibly no way. Power five ball. And I can get over. I can barely, I can't quite get over there. Let's try a, this wind's not going to work. I mean, I'm not going to take the shot, but let's, uh, let's do power. And let's take a top spin boost ball out. And see what that looks like. Like where my bounces are. If I could get my second bounce in that, I might, I might be able to make it over. Maybe. Man, that's a lot of ifs. It's not going to be possible on a headwind day. 
because that headwind's got to be pushing. And this type of, I mean, it seems to me that it's, it's got to be pushing you hard. I mean, like really laying your ball down. Because with a, because like right there, if you're trying to do a max overpower shot, I'm not sure if they can get over against that wind. I'll be curious to see how much this carries. Perfect. Come on. I don't think it's going to make it over. It did. And it made it over by a, a bit. Whoa down, Cat Daddy. Whoa down. All right. Let's see what we can get done with the power three ball. It might be possible, especially if you had certain wind days, to get her done. And this is actually, I don't think I have one in here. It's actually a better day for a big topper because I have to pull back a little from the red line. And 3-6. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get... There's 4... Isn't it perfect? And see where it gets down here. This is probably going to be long iron range. And there's a little teeny bit of rest there. If you hit that grate, especially grate to the left. Well, I think it hits the first bounce is there's close to the rough on the right, and the second bounce is close to the rough on the left. So if you hit a grate on the grate to the right, your first bounce could be in trouble. But if you make it past the first bounce, you should be fine. And if you hit a grate to the left, your first bounce is fine, but your second bounce could be in trouble. And I have no idea what to do to cup, so I'm just going to do wherever I'm at in my club. You can see how steep that hill is behind it. So we're going to try and hit off of this fringe area and do a rough bump in the fairway. I'm actually not quite at the right angle. I like the fact that it's backspin. Sometimes you're doing these shots, you got to put topspin on them. What is that? Six backspin? And you can see that if you're not in the right area, you're going to, it, the ball is going to be off. So if you don't pull this absolutely correct, I have no idea where I'm at in my club. i got to be in minimum. It's 2-5. I think it's one ring. It's actually 3-5, I think. I think 2-4 is the center. Uh, and I hit that so so far bad it was not even funny but you can do that kind of deal right there I don't have my notes in front of me but I, I and I'm just <clears throat> I'm using my thorn for the first time I think it's one eight two four three five or something like that and I have my calculator here but I for some reason did not use it We can set that second shot up so that we have a pretty decent shot at it right there. And you can work yourself into short iron range. Obviously. Obviously. I had to be pretty damn close to... Pretty close to getting into wedge. Nice. Okay, hole number four. Hole number four. All right, just the straight up, straight up. This is one of those things where we're at the very end of our run and we're trying to negotiate a rough area and it's easy to get caught up in this, but I I do believe that we can bring out the right stuff to get on in one. And you can bet whatever it whatever the de the deal is here, I'm going to be trying to get on in one. And this would be another great hole for a precision ball and you just pound it down there and if you don't get on in one, you got a precision ball to back you up. That should be that should be some low hanging fruit. 
this one here you would think that you could go through this but I don't think we can I think we're it's hard to get around the bend all the way enough so that your trajectory if you were doing a max curl shot is like this and you're bleeding through you end up washing out in this area you can get stuck around the corner in here I will once again be trying to go for I think the best you can do here like you might be able to get on I'm sure there's some people out there that have gotten on and they're going no you can get on and I'm sure that it's possible but it's not something that you're gonna do every time just like getting out in front and then doing the short chip to get on maybe maybe let's go look at it let's go look at it hole number four is it hole number four no it's hole number five practice token I think we can get around the bend up there with just a regular three power ball but for some reason I was I am thinking that a ball with more side spin would help and an APOC this would be a hole so if you got let's say you have lower developed clubs and you can get it done with your extra mile or your APOC 3 or whatever what you could do you can get it done with those clubs with a, like a power three ball you can get up there you could go up there with a power five ball and use your big topper so you can make up some of the distance you lost with the power five ball and the big topper's got tons of curl and tons of tops man <coughs> opponent's got a power five ball they're gonna do are they gonna do a max over power hook yep let's see where that goes man i should have paid more attention to where they were at where they set up nice that is beautiful that is beautiful nice shot nice shot my man that right there is the deal there so there's five there's ten there's fifteen I'm gonna point my I'm gonna put my blue ring I'm gonna put my orange ring off of the rough over there four three there's four and some Let's see what trajectory that puts us on. If I need to go to the left or the right. I need to go to the right. And I was two rings off and I need to move that out at least a ring. And try and put my trajectory going towards the cup. And it might be where you put your ball guide. You just aim your ball guide right at the transition. Between the rough and the, and the fairway. Into hold, into hold, into hold ball. Now this is a good spot for a precision ball because this really is a hit it perfect and it goes in position. The wind is not going to be a factor, but I'm going to hedge my bet and try and give myself two sides. Ain't bad. Hitting it perfect. Don't need to worry about it. In the hole. And wind was a little bit of a factor. In the hole. In the hole ball. All right. Let's try that one more time and let's see if we can get our trajectory right. Hole number four. Right, hole number four? No, it was hole number five. <clears throat> Practice. I think we can get our trajectory right. And then it'll be a work. Once... The trajectories, right? I'm going to go to the other side. So instead of moving out one and trying to eke it over, I'm going to go to where I put my ball guy. I'm going to move over two rings and see if it puts me too far to the right or if I still have work that I need to do. 
I'm hoping that it puts me too far to the right, and then we know that it's we're working in the one ring, one ring area. One times whatever the wind is divided by 1.3. And let's do the wind right this time instead of eyeballing it. 4.4 is 3.72 rings. Okay. I'm going to point it right at it. Three point seven two rings. There's three seven two exactly. And I caught it all. And I think I am definitely too high this time. Oh, that might be just right. Just right. That works right there with a Titan. <clears throat> Boy, that's that's good notes right there. On and one with the max overpower hook. Pointing my ball guide right at the transition max with a Titan max extended. Right at the right at it. My opponent went too far to the left or too far to the right. I might still make it. Nope, they went too far to the right. Now, if you recorded your own video, you'd be able to go back and, re and watch that and see where I set it up, and you'd know. Now, you might be able to catch that in a replay, maybe. Sometimes those replays don't show up. I, I think if you forfeit, they don't show up, but I'm not sure what other times they don't show up. If you miss a shot, like if you're out there practicing and you and you time out on a shot, then you go back out there and you hit it. Those replays aren't in the in the book because I do that a lot where I'll miss the first shot just trying to figure out how I want to set it up and then do the shot. Those replays aren't in the in the game. But if you record your own video, you would have access to it. My personal feelings on it, and everybody who watches my channel knows, is that like if you want to make your, if you want to get your game better and you want to have better results, you need to record your own video. Watching my stuff, I'm hopefully will help, but uh, watching your own video is your best, really your best tool. It is. It is. There we go. We now know the deal on that hole. We now have a game plan. Not only are we doing a scouting report, we went and figured out a hole. Hole number six. This is another one of those holes I actually don't freaking remember. It seems like we can bring out... I'm going to have to go play this hole. Because it doesn't seem like we go this way. It seems like we go this way. I'm trying to get out into this range right here so that we've got this straight up shot and we can clear those trees. That's what it seems. It seems like hole number six. That's exactly what it seems like. We'll go see. We'll go see what we can do with the Titan. The king of balls. If we can't get it done with the Titan, we might be in trouble. Trouble. Now, I say I'm not going to hit it to the left, but I could be wrong. It, it does seem like we go straight forward. We might start off to the left, but we're trying to bring it back to the right. But it almost feels like we bounce off one of those islands. I think we were trying to bring out a big enough ball to get over to that area. And I was actually trying to go for the the little island right there. All right, three eight.
Put that forward wind back on. One, maybe two rings great to the left. And I think you can make it over there, but that is a stretch. And if you wanted to ensure that you would make it over to the other side on a non headwind day, you could bring out a power five ball and you wouldn't have to do any overpower, but on a headwind day, you'd have to do overpower into that spot. The good news is, is that if you missed it, you're at least over on the other side, you're over the water. It'd be hard to end up in the water. You would think, just glancing at it, my opponent did exactly the right thing. They didn't try and get greedy like I did. Okay, we know we can recover from there, but what would we have if we actually hit out here? What it, is it worth is it worth fighting for so we're gonna get to see what my opponent has from their spot and we're gonna get to see what I have from this and man that is way downhill our eyes are telling us that elevation wise we should take some wind off but that's not necessarily true my opponent's in short iron I have got to be in wedge if you brought the right ball there there might be a rough bump and if you were at the right angle there might be a rough bump there And I'm just going to do wherever I'm at in my club because I have no idea what to do. So I have no idea if there is an adjustment or what that adjustment is. I am in wedge and I am right at. Do I have a rough bump anywhere along this range? I definitely have topspin. No. divided by 1.2 straight up shot would be 2.91 there's two nine one isn't it perfect <laughs> in and out Needed to take off like plus 0.1, but just do a straight up shot plus 0.1, and I had just a little too much toss and a little too much speed. Close. I'm not sure, because you got to think going down into that kind of a rough area, you're at the very end of your run. I mean, like trying to be realistic with myself that if I look at this hole, you know, the odds are. Shit, it's probably got to be at least 70% of the time I'm going to end up in the rough. So if I had some precision balls, especially 5%, I think with a 5 power ball, I would have had a better shot to get up there. I wouldn't have had to do any overpower. And I would have had a little bit. But trying to get out in here, you might increase, you might increase that 70 to 50% of the time. Or maybe even better than that of ending up in the fairway and having a clean shot at it versus trying to go for the change between long iron and short iron or short iron and wedge. I'm not sure, you know, if we compare these percentages, like what's the better shot for us? I, getting into your better clubs is always better. So I think just trying to lay it up out here and if we're going in our short iron, we may not have to get as much distance. We might be able to just lay it up like right here. We definitely want to clear the trees, so we've got to be past that line, but we might not have to get all the way into this area to still have a short iron shot. And from this angle, it's a little bit better because of the way that it comes up to the green and it rolls up the flagpoles here. And there's a little bit of a flat area at the top and it's rolling down. If we're coming at it from this angle, which is which would be on this line, we might have a little bit better view of it. So those are our areas down here and we just have to decide how we're going to go at it i think i might go for this spot every time just but if we have a headwind day 
that all could change. I may do something different. We'll see. We'll see. Hole number seven. We, we now have a plan. Okay, this is another one of those ones where getting around this bend is kind of a pain in the ass. And I don't, I'm not sure that you can get like, like on a roll where you can get going up there at it. Let's see. Maybe. Maybe. It seemed like we were like ending up down in this area, but I could be wrong on that. Let's think. First of all, side spin would be good. I'm not sure in, if we could get all of our side spin. It might be good. Let's think. Long and hard. Let's think. Let's go look at it. We'll go look at it one time just to see if we can get up there. There might be a max overpower hook shot that we can do on it. Let me make sure I'm in the right hole. Is this hole seven? It is hole seven. It is. Let's practice. Yes, we want to practice. Yes, yes. Give us the stuff. Practice, practice. Hole number seven. Let's make sure we got a bag with a, an APOC. And let's make sure we have... Let's think about what balls we might want to bring out there. I think a Kingmaker, just as a... We look at balls here. And let's look at side spin. Yeah, that five power, five side spin, zero wind ball. That'll really be nice on, on tailwind days. What do I have for four power? Four power, five side spin. Okay, so I do have some options. We can at least look at it. It seems like the red line issue is like right at that bend. It's almost like they put the dog leg right where right where it'd be the worst for us. Damn designers. They're supposed to make a circle and if we hit the ball backwards about five feet we end up in the cup. Good day goes first. Yeah, you can see we're right there in the zone. This is one of those situations where you can hit so far forward in your shot that we've got the bend like this and we're so far forward in our shot and we're trying to get in this direction that we're actually, if, no matter what we do on our ball, we're going to end up on this path instead of down the down the fairway where we actually can pull back a little bit in our shot instead of starting so far forward start back but this has given us that it's forcing us to go if we pull back from the red line it's forcing us to pull to the left which for our purposes sucks look at that that sucks i mean this is normally a shot that i would put backspin on So there's five, there's ten, there's five, there's ten, there's fifteen, there's twenty. Where am I aiming? Let's find a spot out here. I'm aiming right there on that tree. I'm going to try a max over power hook shot and see if we can get it to roll. I don't get, I, I understand if you want to play with a white ball. But I don't really, I'm, I'm not, I suppose you want to find out if you can get it done with a white ball. Nobody practices, nobody practices. Okay, I'm pointing right to that spot on the tree. 
get all of the side spin and curl. Three four. If I had on ten percent, that'd be like three seven. There's three nine. And I got. I think I got all of it. Almost. Just a little bit too much topspin. And I'll have to go back and watch the video to see where the bounces came through. I might be able to move that shot like I was, there's a leaf, like a little gold leaf on that tree and I was pointing right at it. I could come into the right like a ring. If I have, I gotta look at my bounce and see where that bounce was compared to the rough here. I don't want to pull myself to the right and end up clipping the rough on that first bounce. But if I have room, I could move it over to the right and that would open it up so that I have a longer run. And if I put a half less top spend, um, that might be that might be pretty damn good. Might be. Might could be. One ring great to the right. And it will miss. One ring great to the right. For sure. Even if I'd have hit it perfect, I think that would have missed. But we're practicing. What the heck? We're not practicing that shot. We're trying to get up there and get into the good stuff. All right, hole number eight. Hole number eight. We got some practice in. We got some, we got some shots we figured out. All right. Okay, put your big boy pants on, people. All right. There is a lane. If you can get your ball to go through it, where and I and I believe it's a it's a rough bump. It's like a first bounce, second bounce, third bounce rough bump, or a first bounce, second bounce rough bump. But we're trying to bleed out and get into this little teeny corner that's up here in the front before the trees. And if you can get into that spot and you have a the right wood, you can get over here and try and go at it, and you've got a shot at the Albi from that spot. I think if you're over here and you give yourself a, enough distance behind those trees that you can try and run it up this way, but you don't really have a decent shot, but you can try and run it up. I think if you get caught in the rough right here, you can use your rough iron to get over into this spot and you can try and run it up the thing and you, you can give yourself a chance for recovery. But this is a tough asshole that is going to eat a lot of people's lunch. And so we need to figure out the best way to play it so that even if it's not the best way to give us, because really in my, in my opinion, I'll go, we'll go look at it. But in my opinion, the best way to try and get an Albi is to be in this spot and go this direction. But like I said, it, it can be a challenge to try and get into that spot consistently. Let's go look at it. And we're going to play hole number eight. Let's go look. Let's go looky looky. Yeah, okay. Hole number eight. All right, hold on. All right, still not stable. Still not stable. All right, hold on. Maybe, maybe, maybe this time, maybe, maybe. Smile. Red run, red run. I've never watched that movie to the conclusion. I get to the point where the little girls are in the hallway and the kids on the big wheel. And that's the end for me. That's it. This is not the hole. This is not the hole. I went to the wrong one. You can try and go this way. This is the one I was talking about. There's a leaf. We're like It looks like we need to go right there, but there's a leaf on this tree right here that can eat our lunch. But like going for it right here through this lane and trying to put on a little bit of left-hand side spin to get around the tree up there. I find this area, I got a much wider path here to try and get it up. 
than I do. And I'm gonna, I, I might be able to go for that. Let's see if I can get out there with the power three ball. Close, close. You're going to see a lot of people that are going to take the higher route, though, and I like the lower one better. Yeah, my opponent's taking the high route. The high route feels like, intuitively-wise, it feels like it's the better route, but it it has it is fraught with danger that people aren't seeing, especially if you put on any, any uh, right-hand curl. See that little leaf right there? That leaf is in play. <laughs> Bad. Bad. I'm not sure where the out of bounds starts. It looks like we're in the third cut of the rough right there. I thought it was the third cut of the rough, but there is definitely an OB if you're in the trees. I'm not sure where it starts. In it perfect. Get in the hole. Get in the hole, ball. Go home, ball. Woo! All right. That was practice. Good place for a precision ball. I like those balls. Oh, excuse me. These were for sale. I'm not sure what tournament it was, but we were at the Sequoia Ranch or Sequoia, the course that's in the big Sequoia trees when that, that came out, that bus ball or subway ball or whatever it is. Those are good balls. Perfecto. Perfecto. Mm. All right. That was not the hole we were trying to play. What we were trying to play, y'all see here, is hole number eight. Hole number eight is what we were trying to play. Yes, sir. Getting in some, getting in a scouting report, some practice, some firsthand knowledge. Man, you can't pay for this. If I can find an opponent. Astaldo, 409. From the dad bods. Pretty new account. Pretty new. Now, you can go that way and try and get behind those trees, but like I said, you've got to... You have... Well, watch my opponent do it. I'm glad my opponent's doing it. And I hope that they get into the right spot. Now, that, I think that spot won't be too bad. They do have a little bit more distance on there than I'm sure they liked, but that might not be too bad. It'll give them a window. It is a bounce, steady bounce, steady bounce. There's max top spin. I want to put a little teeny bit of side spin on it. Let's look at my bounces. I'm going to do 1.2 times 3 divided by 1.3. It's 276. Two seven six. Isn't it perfect? That was a twenty percent adjustment. Oh, and I just barely missed it. I overpulled it. 
so I would not do the 20% adjustment. Maybe a, maybe a, maybe a 10. Might just hit it perfect with just a, at, at club, whatever the wind is, divided by 1.3. 0%. I wasn't watching my opponent to see where they were able to get, get to. Seems like they might have been able to get a big power ball. Now, can we recover? Yes, we can recover from here. We can recover up in this area and do a bunch of we could we could try and do overpower there, but we can probably just bleed it out and end up right out in front. So we know we can do that. But that's not the shot we came here for. What we came here for was this shot right here. That's what we came to see. That's why we that's why we went through all the trouble to get over there was to try and get this shot. And there is an adjustment on this shot as well, but I can't remember what it is. It seemed like we were outing on a little bit of wind, but it'll be one of those things we need to take the shot a few times and see what what this tournament is telling us we need to do. That looks like it's going to come in a little bit to the right. They moved it one ring, which is not enough, even at minimum club. All right, here we go. Here we go. Wherever I'm at my club, I have no idea. I haven't taken the shot in a while, but it seemed like we needed a big hitting wood. You can see where my red line's at. So if I had a sniper, I'd be back here. And if I had a headwind, I'd be in some trouble. So I'm going to pull back to the plus one mark. I'm at max club, so it's uh, three divided by 1.4. It's 2.14 rings. I almost did 1.8. 2.14. Oh man, I thought I had that per I thought I was on the perfect and that was a one ring great to the left. And that was way off, so like maybe 10%. Maybe start at 10. I would have expected a one ring great if I was right on track to be like no more than two squares off, and that was like four. That is the spot that we would be trying to hit to down there. Now, if you bring out a bigger ball, you treat this hole with some respect and you bring out a Titan and you hit over to where my opponent was at. Number one, I think it would be easier to get to where my opponent was at. And number two, you got a much better shot. You can get you can get yourself up into very short recovery range if you bring out a power three ball. This is a hole that's going to cause people a lot of problems this week, and I'm going to take a I'm going to take a Titan. We'll go we'll go do that hole with a Titan, and we'll do exactly what my opponent did. Because the thing is, if we're having a lot of issues on the rough bump, we're finding ourselves either caught up in the rough or bleeding out, and ending up in the rough in the front, and we're we're not getting to our spot. And it's causing us problems. We need to have a shot that we can do. It may we may have to work at it, but we do have a shot that we can go fairway to fairway to green. Fairway to green. Make our putt move along, little doggy. Because I do think that this hole is going to be the the problem. A problem child you gotta watch out about that rough that's right there on the tip the thing here is is we don't want to be too close behind the trees otherwise they'll be blocking our path so what do i got four tops from four and a sliver three three point one times three point three divided by one point three two seven nine there's two, seven, five, seven, nine. In the power of the whole way.
Now hopefully I'm not too close behind the trees where the trees are in my way. I might be too close. I might be. If I am too close, I'm going to hit it back and see, like, is there a spot? Because we're, we're practicing. That's the whole deal. And that area down there that we want to hit to that's and coming out of that rough is really freaking narrow. If we just try and lay, lay up on that pad, we might be able to get over there with a power five ball and a cataclysm or a big dog. Maybe. But I don't know how easy it would be just to lay up on the island. My opponent is in the perfect spot. Perfect. Perfecto. Perfecto. I am in the trees. I am just a little bit too close. go right there actually I'm not gonna I I think I could weave it around the trees but what I'm gonna do is let's see is there a spot out here that's better like if I just barely made it like I did before I do a rough bump over here and just clip out I will definitely have a shot from there My opponent brought a sniper and they got into the premium spot and have a three power ball and they have plenty of window. So it can be done with a sniper. But if you're bringing out a lower power ball, you need to switch clubs. And my opponent is really in the perfect spot. They're way up front. It doesn't get much better than where they're at. And they hit a great. Close. I think if they'd have hit that perfect, they'd have missed it on the other side. At that distance. All right. With my cataclysm, you can recover from here. So this, that could be an option for us. 2.8. It's 1.4 per ring, so two rings is 2.8. Puts me a ring and a half into power. Isn't it perfect? Just getting it up there so we can recover. So we do have a shot down there, but we definitely that it's not the first shot has to be in the right spot, and the second shot we got work to do. It might be worth going down there for that rough bump because if we get to the right spot, we have a shot at it, a serious shot at it. If we don't get to the right spot, we could recover with our we could recover from down there as long as we're not behind the trees. If we're in the rough and we don't so we, if we fail on that hole, we definitely want to fail if we're going to go for the shot down here because you can get you you if you were in the rough down here, you follow along this line with your Nirvana until you get to the point where you can you can get into the fairway and apply your topspin. We're looking at this neck, but where we really want to get is anywhere on the other side of that neck. That's a pretty easy shot. I think we can recover from down here. It's not something I would want to do on a regular basis, but I think we can. We can, we can, we can recover. We can. All right, hold on. I'm about to die. All right, I had to give it a I had to give it a few minutes. It was at three percent. Now it's at six. Now it's at six. So I don't want the video to turn off. It doesn't have enough juice to run the run the camera. Where was I? Where was I? That was like five hours ago. Five minutes, seven minutes ago, twelve an hour, thirty minutes, something like that. 
that's the prime spot. If you get past this line up here, you could be in trouble. You really want to be like right in this area if you're going this direction. I'm not sure, you know, I am really, I'm kind of torn. Like I, if you find a, a hole like this where you've got a very tight little window that's that's the primo spot, you know, like what what's the not primo spot, but I can always get up on the green and get my birdie eagle and move on. This spot over here might be tough. I think I... I think I'm going to continue to work this spot right here. That this, I mean, if we don't make it, we'll have to come out. Especially if we bring, especially if we bring out a bigger power ball to make sure that, you know, like, if you want to play this with a sniper and you want to make sure you're in your sniper range up here, bring out a power five ball. You won't need it necessarily on the drive, but on the second shot, it could help you. If you do find yourself in the rough, that ball will really help you. Because if you can get your Nirvana up into this zone right here, you can get it up into the neck and your short chip away. All right, last hole, last hole, last hole, hole number nine. I like these holes. I like these. I have traditionally done pretty well in the nine hole cups that deal with par fours and par fives. I think I have one or two. And I think in pro, the ones that I have in Odd Odd, I think, were these types because this is where you're, you make your money. And you can get up on this. This is another one of these holes. There is a bunch of these holes here. I will tell you, I'm, Playdemic can, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of what they're doing with the game. There's just so many things they could do that would totally excite their customer base and, like, if you put that idea in front of them and then you drew a, a line 180 degrees away from that, that's the direction that they're going on all of the stuff. I just can't, I, I just can't get behind the people at Playdemic. But as a player, the Power 5 Precision Balls are definitely worth getting because this is another one of those holes that instead of trying to, like let's look at where we're at on the tee box from the rookie tee, drawing a line straight to the cup. I mean, this isn't a big angle here to try and get through, but what we gotta do is we gotta find the spot out here where we set our apocalypse up five rings off of this. And I think with this angle, this is just a max curl shot. We don't need to do a max overpower hook. However, this whole screams max overpower hook. But to try and get your trajectory through this little neck, <clears throat> if you hit if your trajectory, if you had it all worked out and your trajectory was going right through this and you hit a one ring grate to the left or the right, you're going to, if it was to the right, you're going to end up over here or over here because you're at the very end of your run. So like you're coming through here at bounce number one, you were one ring to the right and then bounce number two, you're two rings. <laughs> I mean, you're way the hell off when you get down to the end. It is a narrow little run. More often than not, you're going to end up, if you were really trying to go for it, bringing out the right shit, you're going to end up in the rough or the sand more times than you end up, you know, this is going to be 33% or less. And 67% of the time, you're going to end up in the crop. If you have a precision ball, that is you hit perfect it goes in the whole range i'm curious let's 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 go out and play this hole one time and see like what we like we'll look at i'm going to look at it first cuz i think you can do it with i think you can just do a max curl shot i don't think i'm i i i don't think you can get up there far enough with a kingmaker i think you really would want to bring out a bigger power ball if you have a lower device, you are going to hope, like, maybe I can get it done with a Kingmaker. Because if I can get it done with a Kingmaker with that club, you can bring out a Power 5 ball with a big topper. And you might be able to get the same kind of results. Maybe better, because a big topper's got more topspin. Let's set a bag up that's got a big topper in it. I don't have... This was set up for that last tournament, so let me switch this bag to what it should normally be. Man, I might start using that thorn. 
I used that thorn in this last tournament, and I kind of, I, I might use it. I've been using a Kingfisher, and I'm really pretty happy with it. And it's it hits really accurate at the at 1.1. I get into situations with it because it doesn't have enough topspin. And there's some times where I could do a rough bump with my short iron if I had just like six topspin. And I'm a little short. And one of the reasons that I like the, the club, especially there's a period of time when you first start playing and you've got low developed clubs that the Kingfisher is, and you want to get it in your bag and you want to get it to like level three, I think. And then you can use it for a bit. And then it goes by the wayside, but when you get it up to level, when you get it up to level seven, and you get towards the end of the run with your clubs, it does. It is an awesome. It's the only thing that matches the thorn with ball guide. And typically, I don't use the curl. I, I mean, occasionally you've got to use the curl, but typically, if I find myself having to use any curl with a short iron, I didn't put myself in the right spot or I didn't bring the right ball. But that hunter backspin, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch and play with that for a while, even in my my number one bag, and see if I can get used to the thorn. See if I can develop any confidence in it. The thorn gives gives me another shot that the kingfisher that I had with the kingfisher because it has 67 backspin. But having a hunter backspin is is a different deal. So I will find that most shots with the thorn I'll play them exactly like I played my kingfisher I'll put on one or one two three backspin and run that ball guide up to the cup and try and hit it perfect but there's some shots where you're using backspin where I don't have enough backspin to really get at it and here I could switch to the backspin shot and try and walk my tail back to the cup the thorn's not a one-trick pony so let's let's prove the point I'm going to bring that ball. All right, I'm ready. We'll go look at it. I'm going to spend the first the first one just looking. Looky, looky. And then we'll figure out what to do. Hole number nine. Practice. <clears throat> All right, last hole. Practice. Couple of the holes I didn't, uh, hey, hey, what is the deal? Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not go practice hole number one again. I did practice a hole that I didn't want to practice. This tournament might worth be worth making notes for, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play my like I'll work at it and I need to get in my log into my auto account and do a pro scouting report because this is definitely a tournament from the pro tees. It'll be a little different. I th I really do th I think this might be from the pro tees where. I'll have to go. I'll have to go out there with Ot Ot and see what the deal is on it. A lot of these holes are, in my opinion, are setup holes where you go up there and you set your your you set your ring set off five rings off of this transitional surface and you put on max toss spin and you do max curl. And I would want to set up everything with max curl. My opponent got there with that. So you can get on with the bigger ball. And that is the deal. Man, this is a long asshole. Long. Max top spin. So we're trying to figure out the angle. So I'm five rings off. And I think I'll over curl that. Three six. I'm gonna move three, and then back on the plane. I'm 
I'll put that back on. Now it's two rings to the right, and I think that actually helped me because I think I was going to over curl it. Yeah, if you brought a top spin boost ball, even a four power ball or a three power ball with top spin boost right there, that would definitely, definitely get you. The two ring great to the right, I thought I was pinched up. So where the fairway bend was at right there, I had my white ring off the transition and I needed to go to the right about two rings. It felt like my angle from where I was pointing to what I was going to be able to clear that if I hit it perfect or if I got a great to the left, I could I would end up in the rough. That a perfect would probably put me in the rough. And that's the deal. There is is you're kind of in you're kind of out in the middle, so you got to eyeball this one ring. What you could do is you could pull it. You could pull nine rings so you can keep yourself in it. And then go down there and pull off a ring out into the fairway. And then pull your wind out. What do we have from here? Thorn. There's minimum thorn. There's max. Min. So there's mid. I'm in between mid and mid and min. I can't remember what min is. I think it's a uh, three five. I'm gonna move it a ring. And I hit a great. I think I came in great on the side that I hit. Here, hold on. Hold on. All right, I went and got my book. And I didn't make you sit there in silence. In the hole. Let's try that one more time, but I'm gonna bring out a, either a four power ball or a three power ball with toss and boost. And I have numbers in front of me for my thorn. Let's make sure I got those. Let's make sure I have them written down on my cheat sheet as well as my 182435. 182435. I was right on the 35. I think I was right on the 24 as well. I gotta rem I gotta memorize those numbers. Those are brand new numbers for me. Practice. Hole number nine, I got the right bag. Just in case I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring that bag. All right, let me think. Let me get my calculator working here so I can do the wind. I can actually do the wind. Let's, let's, let's be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to be serious for one hole. 1.1 times. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, watch an ad. Hold on. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Let's make sure all everything's right so I don't have to go through that again. Okay, I'm on hole number nine. I have my number four bag and I have a kingmaker chosen. We are ready to roll. I have my calculator up. 1.1 times the wind divided by 1.3. And I think from where I was at, I need to go, I'm gonna go one ring out into the fairway, maybe one and a half.
Okay, that's where I'm hitting. Hitting on that line right there. I'm gonna go one ring out into the fairway. Ah, uh, we're gonna use a, we're gonna use, let's do power here and let's do a ch -ch top spin. I don't know that I need five top spin boosts, but I am gonna bring, I am gonna bring that ball right, I'm gonna bring one of those player balls. I forgot we were practicing. I got caught up in the moment and forgot that I was what I was. I forgot what I was doing. I went out here and I just played it like it was a rig around. I fell into the trap. I fell into the playdemic trap. Where in the hell are you hitting that? Now, if they give me the frowny face, like, dude, like, where did you think that ball was going to go? Switch that ball up. Top spin boost. Three power ball. Player ball. The player. Five side spin. I don't really need the five side spin. I'm going to bring one of these. I was doing a little less than three, so let's get all of it on. Four two. Four point two. It's three point five five rings. That was two rings on the inside. I moved it out one ring, but that's we're gonna see the if I clip. I'm not sure I got any farther. It's good to know that I have room. I have quite a bit of room. I moved out one ring. I have quite a bit of room on the inside because that was that was as much on the inside as the other shot was on the outside. If you bring out a four power ball, you're gonna actually probably be the full ring set and like at least two rings out into the fairway because It'll hit you farther in your shot, and it widens out up there. All right, I've got numbers in front of me. I'm gonna take a straight up shot. It did seem like I needed to. We'll see, we'll see where I'm at. Okay, I'm in minimum thorn. I'm going to put on like one or two backspin. Let's get right up on the hole. 3-3 three, three, divided by 3.5. 0.94 of a ring. I'm going to move it one ring. One ring. Exactly. Hitting it perfect. In the hole. In the hole. Woo. All right. It does put us into short iron range, but I think that we can work that out with a bigger ball and get on in one. Definitely a spot for a precision ball. Definitely, definitely, definitely. With a, if you've got lower developed clubs, I would strongly think about if you have lower developed stuff, bringing out a power five ball and a big topper. Now, you might, it might be better. You might net more yardage. All right, there you have it. That was a scouting report. That, that, hey, that was a scouting report, mini practice round. You got some bonus action. I played a hole that I didn't expect I was going to play. You got all kinds of good stuff going on. I think you got to see me screw up on the golden shot. Did I have I picked my? Have I picked my pony? I did. I did pick my pony. I, I might have picked my pony on this as well. Shit, you guys got the full meal deal. 
you got your money's worth. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. I will, uh, I, I think I am going to pop up my auto account and play around in pro because it will be, these are long holes in pro. So there's, you know, like what, what our options are and I will see you there. Dun, 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 dun. If I can get out of here. What, what is this ball? Does this ball have precision? It does. It's a power four precision two ball. Look at that. And a lot of these holes you want to, I think we're just going to hit ourselves into the sand. This could be a popular ball this week. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it to hell. Dag nabbit. See you then.